In today's video, I'm gonna teach you how to improve your softball throwing mechanics just from a couple little tweaks that you can make during your team's pregame. So if you're a coach and you want your team to improve their throwing velocity, their throwing accuracy, and, all, and make some of those tough plays on the run and improve some of their throwing tasks, well then, this video is gonna be for you because pregame, there's a lot of little things that might seem unimportant that I think are really important in the long run as we try to get quality reps every single time we touch a softball. So if you're new here, I'm Coach Dan Blewett. I'm a former pro baseball player. I do lots of softball throwing drills, mechanics, tutorials, strength training videos, mindset stuff. All that goes on here on my, on my Snap Softball channel. So if you're new here, definitely consider subscribing. Stick around because I put out new videos each week. Okay, so the first thing that definitely needs to get corrected is don't let your players do step through throws. This was something that I battled softball and baseball players with for years. When they think of like go warm up, they think just like throwing the ball like this where they're just stepping towards their target is warming up their arms. You need to change the culture on your team from warming up as a physical, like I'm pumping warmth into my arm just by throwing any single, any given way, to I warm up by having a structured routine of drills and different types of throws that make me better at my specific position. So a catcher's throwing routine in pregame is gonna look a little different than an outfielder's routine, and it's gonna look different than an infielder's routine. And the best thing you can do as a coach is to convey this, that hey, we have some core drills as a team, which I'm sure most of you have, but then the big component that's missed a lot of times is we also have some specific position, positional drills that are gonna make an infielder's throwing routine unique to an infielder, catcher, outfielder, etc. So that's really important. Even at the college level, I've seen a lot of teams, they just send their players into right field and they just step through and they throw. And you know that every throw they're making is actually making them a little bit worse because they're not reinforcing good habits. They're just warming up their arm. They're stepping through and not having good throwing mechanics. So if at the very least, if you did nothing else, but you stayed uh, close to your target and shuffled your feet really fast, that would be good because when your feet are moving fast and your chest is closed to your target, meaning I'm throwing that way and my chest can't be seen by my partner, that puts us in a really good position to use the body as a whole as a system. So at the very least, if your players always have to move their feet fast, which is something the Latin American baseball players grew up doing really, really well, which is why they grew up to be great throwers and great infielders, that's a very bare minimum that would still make a really big impact on your team. But don't, don't overlook the way your players warm up and make it a cultural thing where it's not only structured but fun and, spe and position specific. Number two, do not hit ground balls to your players that are less than 40 or 50 feet away. Now, of course, there's some caveats this once in a while when you're practicing different types of throws, like the feed throw to second, or they're throwing on the run or stuff like that. But I've seen a lot of teams in pregame, they might have uh, the coach hitting right, be right behind first base, hitting ground balls to a group of kids at the second base area, which is only like 30 or 40 feet away. And now because they get a ground ball, they charge a little bit, and now their throw is only 25 or 30 feet, they're just going to throw a dart. Even if you can throw a ball 90 miles per hour, you're still going to throw a dart from 25 feet away. And so now every time you get a ground ball there, you can make the throw, you can hit your, your first baseman in the chest with ugly throwing mechanics. Your body doesn't have to learn to improve your throwing. And so you want to move them back where they have to move their feet, they have to stay close, they have to have good footwork, and their whole body has to work as a system. So I've seen this at a bunch of different levels. It's not a good habit to get into. The softball field is so small already, which is part of the reason a lot of softball players can get by having poor throwing mechanics or throwing darts across the infield. When it's a longer throw, it exposes your throwing mechanics and, in, and it forces your body to adapt to it. It forces you to say, okay, this ball's not really getting there. I need to stay closed a little more. I need to use my front side a little better. I need to move my feet a little bit better. And your body will start to adapt especially if you have good athletes on your team, they will start to figure it out on their own. So I'd encourage you to move your players back so when they make a throw in pregame, it's a minimum, I'd say 50 feet. And again, if that means you have to cut down the amount of ground balls you hit, or maybe they're just like fielding a couple and just like tossing it in like a discard, not rather than like making an actual throw, that's fine. You know, like getting them warmed up and getting their, them their reps is important, but you just don't want them to be constantly throwing like this 
as part of their pregame because that's not the way we want to throw. We don't want our elbow leading in front. We want our body moving as a system and our arm getting thrown back into external rotation, all that stuff, because that's how we throw our hardest and that's how your body's going to learn. So please, if you're doing your pregame infield drills, make sure they're farther away so it forces them to use their whole body. And the third thing that you can do, and this is for infielders again, is allow your players and make it part of your routine that they throw on the run and they throw from sidearm arm angles. Sidearm could be here, it could be below sidearm, but basically, and I'll, I'll link below, I put another long video out about shoulder tilt. Your arm always has to match the tilt of your shoulder. So if you're throwing overhand, you have to pull your front side down and get this tilt. You can't throw with a high arm slot with your shoulders level. It physically just like doesn't work. I'm trying to make it work right now, but your elbow will bend. If you watch a baseball pitcher or a softball player, it doesn't make a difference. This arm follows your shoulder tilt. And softball is such a small field and such a fast game. And you have to charge the ball as an infielder to get some of these speed, speed demons out of first base, right? They hit a chopper between short and third. That, that third baseman's got to charge it and get rid of it. And when you're running across the diamond, when you're on the move, it has to be a level-shouldered sidearm throw. You don't, have to be, you don't have time to be running, and you have no way to really set yourself and then get your front shoulder and pull it down to create the tilt that's going to let you throw overhand. Every throw you see that's on the run that's charged in baseball, they throw it sidearm. Every single one without exception. If they're really close, they might throw a dart, but you can't be running and then get your arm above. It's physically uncomfortable and borderline impossible. So your body is smart. It understands when my shoulders are level, I'm going to make my arm angle match it. So softball, again, is such a fast game. There's, you're charging the ball. You're getting rid of it as quickly as you can. Those are all things that sidearm is good for. Sidearm is a very quick, effective, fast throw, especially for short distances. And the common complaint is my girls can't throw sidearm. They don't, they're, they, they're super wild when they try. They throw it away. They get frustrated. And, and the reason they do that is because they don't practice it enough. It's just that simple. Every kid in baseball learns to throw sidearm if they want to be an infielder in high school or college. They just learn it. And if they're not good at it, they go home and they play with their buddies and they emulate the big leaguers and they make all those fun throws and they get better. And it's honestly a fun th thing to practice. And so if you make it part of your practice and part of your pregame routine, it's going to get easier and they're going to find confidence in it. And it's a really exciting, fun play to make. I mean, you see a girl charge a ball and make this spectacular athletic play. You're going to see a big smile on her face. She's going to have more confidence. And now she's not going to have any issues charging those balls, trying to cut them off and make more of that exciting play. So make it part of your routine. Don't just make every ground ball the, the square up, field in the center, step and throw. Force them, hey, we're going to go two this way and throw it on the run. Don't square your feet up. Don't square your feet up. Make it a tough throw. This is something that's going to benefit them in the long run. And I promise you, they can do it. Even if they're struggling with it now, keep at it. It's a big part of the game, especially as it gets, as they climb the ladder and the game gets faster. So just encourage them that, hey, if you throw a couple away in pregame, no big deal. It's pregame, right? So that's my third tip. I really think teaching your players to throw on the run, to make some of these off-balance, difficult throws in pregame is just going to set them up for success in the game and then down the run as they continue to climb the ladder in their sport, okay? So hopefully today's video helped. If you're new here, again, I'm Coach Dan Blewett. I do tons of softball throwing drills, mechanics, tutorials, all that stuff. So hit the like button for me, subscribe to the channel, and stick around because I put out new videos each week, and I will see you here on the next video.